And now I would like to welcome for this hour former trial and appellate attorney, Dr. Tracy A. Pearson, also in Los Angeles, California. Thank you, Tracy, for joining us. Let me start with you if I could. What are your thoughts as we conclude direct examination of the lead detective about the strength of the prosecution's case? Thanks for having me, Ashley. Uh, it's great to be back. Um, I think that the prosecution has a very strong case here. Uh, even without uh, the admissibility of uh, the prior bad acts of the defendant, um, which of course are admissible uh, in this case, uh, in, in this situation we have a very uh, sympathetic uh, group of, of young men who uh, were attempting to um, defend themselves and defend someone who was being um, being harassed by Mr. Mosley. Um, and in this situation, uh, it, it seems as if Mr. Mosley has an uphill battle to, to fight in order to, um, to secure an acquittal. And we've been talking, Tracy, um, Nima and I have about some of the things that the defendant did after the fact. And he says it's self-defense. He never turned himself in. In fact, it took four days for law enforcement to find him in a home that was vacant. And it's described during that testimony from the lead detective. He was smoking a cigar. He had on gym shorts, no injuries to the face. He'd shaved his head and his clothes, clothing was different. Does that mean anything to you when you hear that particular set of facts? It doesn't mean anything. Yes, absolutely it does. Uh, it means evidence of a guilty mind. Uh, when you're trying to uh, disguise your appearance, when you're trying to evade capture, um, when uh, you know, you're alleging self-defense, but you don't have injuries of your own, um, and uh, you haven't come forward voluntarily to seek help, the first thing I'm doing is calling the police if someone has attacked me. Uh, all of those things point to, uh, unfortunately for him, a, a conviction in this case.